Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. I'm a Power Platform developer. Today I wanted to go over a few different ways to start uh, Power Automates from like a button click. Many different ways to do this manually. So I had a few ideas. I put together a very simple PowerPoint. So if you think my PowerPoint's not perfect, I just kind of threw some things together to kind of help us go through this. So what I want to focus on is starting flows manually from a button click, or you would call this instant cloud flows. So the first one is you can actually run flow straight from Teams. Well, let me show you this. So let's say you're in Microsoft Teams. You can actually write to Power Automate. You can actually write directly to Power Automate. So you say to Power Automate. Once you're in here speaking to Power Automate, uh, you, you can type in list flows. Let me see if I type that in right, list flows. And it's actually gonna run uh, list the flows that you can manually trigger. So it will trigger you know, uh, flows that are on a schedule, uh, flows with no inputs. Let's just create one real quick just so we can see a second one up here. So I'm gonna create a flow of type scheduled. Now you can do instant cloud flow, but you know maybe you have one that sends an email every morning on, mon on Monday, let's just say, that you send an email. And we'll do a new step and we'll just email. It's a recurring um, flow, send an email. Hey, send email. Hi or hey. Basically, I just want a flow to show up when I uh, query it in Teams. So now let's go back to Teams. So we're back in Teams. Let me hit list flows. And now you can see that I have a new flow that I can send from straight from Teams. And I can just say, uh, if you click on here, I believe you just type in run flow, and then you just put two. And it's gonna run that flow. Done, your flow has ran. It then just sent me an email. So if we go to my Outlook, we should see I have a new email here. Hey, send email. That's one way to manually trigger a flow. Really neat, really cool, really fast. All right, let's keep going. All right, so another option from Teams is actually, if you come to uh, a chat in Teams, any, any chat, you can see the three little dots here. Uh, you go to more actions and you can see, oh, my face is in the way, hold on one second. Okay, so when you go to more actions, you can see we have an action here called create new. So we can actually create a flow from here. So follow up on a message. Um, so this is from a selected message is the trigger. So follow up on a message, we can create a flow here. And then this flow is now gonna appear in your own personal teams um, when you want to run a flow. So we can just run the flow, follow up on this message, uh, put the date in. So this is just out of the box template. send a reminder based on a message. So now when I hover over, I believe it's always gonna be there, right there. We have our, our flow, it did run up on the, in the background. This is built off the selected message trigger. So if we come back into my flows, new flow, I believe we can do automated cloud flow and then we search for selected I believe it's message. Let's see if we can find this. So let me skip from here. Maybe I can find it better when I, I come in here. So we'll go to Teams, Microsoft Teams, and then from a selected message. So that's actually what that uh, flow is built off of. You can create an adaptive card. There's lots of information in there. That's a whole nother uh, video. But this is built off from a selected message. You can then send a flow from Teams. So that's another way. All right, so let's check out the PowerPoint. All right, so next I have run flow from a selected item. I did have a video on this before, but uh, let me show you this. You can select an item in SharePoint and then manually click on it to run a Power Automate flow. 
Okay, so let's say we're in SharePoint. We can then go to Automate Rules. We could create rules here. We can actually go to Integrate, Power Automate, Create a Flow. So we can create a flow from here. It gives us different um, out-of-the-box templates if we wanted to. We can do a request and approval in Teams. We can also configure our own if we really wanted to. This is built off from selected item trigger. So if you notice, when an item is created, uh, this is not exactly what I wanted. I want, actually, to delete this here. And the trigger is going to be SharePoint. And it's for selected item. And the site is my task list. And then we want issues and risks. Okay, and I'm just going to save. Now this flow may not be perfect. It wants the ID. There we go. There's a couple more things it wants in here. Test, assign to. Just trying to get any flow to show up in our SharePoint list. Okay, so we have request approval in Microsoft Teams, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll go back to our SharePoint. Now let's see if this works fast enough. If we go to here, Power Automate or Automate Rules, it's not there yet. Oh, the trick is you have to select an item. Once you select an item, then in Automate, you can see it right here. Request approval in Microsoft Teams when a SharePoint item is created. That is that flow that I just created. So we can run this by manually clicking on here and running that flow. So that's going to say, hey, you know, I want to connect everything. This is a one-time thing. And you just say, true, you run it, you run your flow. And we've now just ran our flow based on selected item. Now there's another little trick that you can do here that I, I found online. So I don't want to say that this was my idea, but let me show you. All right, so I saw this posted on many different uh, blog articles. But for this one, I'm going to uh, go over this one. Um, let's power automate and it's pretty recent uh, 2023 January I'm gonna take their their schema right here their JSON I'm gonna copy this so this is from I wish I could figure out just let's power automate who wrote this I, I want to give them credit but uh, they just wrote some simple JSON that's going to create a button in our SharePoint list so I'm gonna take this uh, JSON and put it in notepad all right, so I have it in Notepad here. You can see it, it's pretty small. You can see this ID. I want this ID to be my ID on my Power Automate. So I'm gonna to go to Power Automate, and I'm gonna to go to that one that's for selected item. So I'm gonna refresh, give myself a refresh. That's this one that's for selected item. Well, let me pull that down, I notice you can't see that. So actually, in the URL right here, this is the ID that I want for my own notepad. So I'm gonna take this ID right here at the end. Once I click in my flow, click edit, I can get my, my ID of my flow right here. So I'm gonna take that and put it in notepad. All right, so here's my notepad. I'm gonna replace the ID, okay? And I'm gonna take the schema, the JSON. I'm gonna go back to my SharePoint. And for a column, which I don't have a column yet, I'm going to create a column of text. I'll call it button, right? And I'll just hit save. All right, I have a new column called button. And as soon as this disappears, there we go. I will now format this column and advanced. I'll put in my own schema, JSON, hit save. All right, so now I have my own button in SharePoint. I can click on the button. It's going to do just like before with selected item, except for you don't have to select. It's already, the selection is already built into that column. And then I just run flow. Once again, I ran that same for selected item. I have my own button in SharePoint in a column. So that's another really neat way to start a flow based off a button click. All right, so I had a slide for this one too. This is use Power Apps to start a flow. So imagine you had a Power App with a bunch of buttons built into it and you could post this Power App in a SharePoint page. Let me show you. So on my home page here, 
I actually have a power app on the right side and it's just a few different buttons. I don't think I have anything attached to them, but we have icons and buttons and I just posted, uh, put my power app on this page. So if we go to edit, we can actually see this is a power app and we could build in different power automate flows based on our power app, right? And we can enlarge it if we wanted to make it a little bit bigger for the page. But this is just a power app, so let me show you. The really neat thing that I like about this is you could have beginner power appers, uh, citizen developers create their own power apps with Power Automates, and you could make a control center. You could actually make this for uh, some of your no-code developers and just put this power app on someone's, you know, on their SharePoint site, or you can even put it on Teams, or it could go mobile, right? So you could start Power Automates workflows manually from anywhere with the click of a button. So you would just have a button here and you would attach a Power Automate to it. So let's see, you would come here, create a new flow, attach your flow to that button click. We would just type in the name of the Power Automate on the left side. So you would type in add, let's see, it'll come up, run. And you know, it wants to know, there's a few variables here, create item list name, create items and email. There's a lot of actually variables to this. But you could just imagine you would have a flow that would run on each of these, these buttons. And so the great thing is, is you could put this on a SharePoint site, right? You could put this in Teams. So let's say we have Teams um, and we wanted to add a Power App to it. Let's see if it will go fast enough for me for this video. Add a Power App. And the great thing is, is you can resize this based on, you know, whatever your content is. If you're using a tablet, you're going to resize it for the tablet. So since I'm using Teams, I allowed it to have all of this space. We now have my Power App coming into Teams. We have a control center. It looks the exact same. So I do think this is another good idea. You could put this Power Auto app on a SharePoint site. You could put it in Teams. You could put it in your another power app. You could run it from your mobile. So this would this would create like a command center. When I think about this, I think of it of like a, a DJ controller. You know, you have a controller, and you could probably even design your power app to look beautiful like that. Let me see if I can open up the image. Um, I just want the image. But yeah, you could have like a little DJ command center. Have different buttons, different buttons that click things. You could have dials that change the power automate, you know, based on how you select it. I really think you could build out a power automate like that. So the main purpose of this video was just to give you guys a bunch of ideas, not to tell you how to do things, but give you ideas. I did a little bit of research how you could run a power automate by manual button click. Obviously, the one right out of the box, the very easy way, actually, is just to do an instant uh, cloud flow and you can just have a button click in power automate here you could come here and do it or you could um instant cloud flow and, and run the button from mobile so lots of ideas here you can look through the instant cloud flows yourself um looks like there's a power bi button click uh there's all kinds of little button clicks for selected row in excel um Lots of really neat things you can do here. Wanted to give you some ideas. Hopefully this helps you. Maybe this will broaden your ideas of what you want to create uh, your Power Automates to be like. Instead of them always being triggered automatically or scheduled, you could have give this to some no-code developer and give them a Power App and let them click the buttons themselves and help tons of people who maybe are not IT complete their jobs much easier, much faster, based on a button click. So thank you all for watching. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next time.